Welcome back to the On The Ball podcast, another episode of The Greatest Show Going Around. And we're here for the final regular season episode. Well, I guess last, next week, we'll be reviewing the final week of the regular season. But this is the first, uh, the last, you know, regular season preview. And then it's finals time, baby. So let's go this week, usual stuff, review, preview. And we're also going to be doing something a little bit different in the middle. We've been trying to spice it up a bit more in the middle to make it more engaging and more interesting and less just like um, analytical review preview. I like to think of some interesting concepts to do in the middle. So this week, uh, the AFL have their 22 under 22 team where they pick a um, an AFL team as 22 players, if you didn't know. And so they pick 22 players under the age of 22. Um, so I've tried to think of something NRL related couldn't really think of like a number thing that works well like that. The best I could come up with is 17 under 97, like 17 under 97. So I've gone with people born in 1997 or younger. So it's pretty much just like a best youth team. Um, I, yeah, I didn't know what age to pick. I probably could have gone younger because this is a very good team and it made it very hard to select. If I went younger, it would have been a bit more interesting, I think. But um, who knows? We could do that in the future. Um, also excited in the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing my NRL top 50, top hundred. I'm still not sure how many players, but the NFL do this thing at the end of each season where they announce the top hundred players. And I'm going to be doing my own version of that in both NRL and AFL, which I'm excited for. But before we get into that good stuff, we'll be talking about NRL round 24, um, game by game. So Newcastle Gold Coast was the Thursday night game, huge match in terms of finals, uh, the Knights won by one point. I have to say it was a pretty low quality game. There was a lot at stake and I think that might have lowered the quality because uh, the intensity was high. There was a lot of pressure. No one really wanted to give an inch. So the, like normally that results in great games, but um, in this situation, it wasn't the greatest game of footy. Newcastle just aren't playing good footy at the moment and the Titans are really inconsistent and unfortunately they didn't play great footy themselves. I was going for the Titans hard, thought they were going to win. Knights one by one point, Piercy uh, still got it in terms of finishing off games and the Knights sealed their spot in seventh and the Titans now look an outside chance of finishing in the top eight. I'll talk about who I think is going to make the eight in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, disappointing from the Titans. Um, they're a team that's good enough to make finals and um, the fact that it, the Sharks or Raiders who haven't been playing good footy all year um, who I would say the Titans have been better than for most of the year. If they miss out to finals on them, I think they'll be pretty filthy with themselves because I don't think they've made finals in a few years. They, I feel like they made one maybe 2018, 2017. Can't remember. But, uh, yeah, so that was disappointing for the Titans, but good win from the Knights. Like, um, we sort of don't get around them, but that, like a win's a win, and they're just getting the job done in every game they play, and it's going to get – it's booked them as a spot in September, and who knows? Once you – once you – you need a ticket to dance at the ball. Is that a saying? You need a ticket to win the lottery, something like that. You, they've bought them. They've given themselves a chance. Is what I'm trying to say. That moves us into Friday afternoon slash early game. Another game with huge top eight um, implications. The Warriors up against Canberra, and this was a really really good game of footy. Um, the Warriors just hey, they play in this time slot almost every second week because of um, New Zealand time zone, but. B, they make it really interesting. They make games good. All their games seem to come down to the last five minutes. You would not want to be a Warriors fan. But, um, yeah, they got run over the top by Canberra. And the scoreline of 28-16 uh, is flattering to the Canberra uh, because they scored a try with, like, the last play and they would scored a go-ahead try with, like, two minutes left. So, realistically... Uh, I think it was like 18-16 uh, with five minutes to go to Canberra or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it was a really, really good game. Went right down to the wire. Ultimately, the Cam Canberra Raiders sort of just won the game in the middle. I know Tarpany had a really good game, um, sort of testing my memory a little bit there. But uh, Sean's at fullback. He made such a big difference. I remember Simmonson was having a lot of trouble under the high ball. Ended up injuring his quad, I believe, and he got taken off. Rapner went wing. Chance came on at fullback, and all of a sudden the game just switched for the Raiders, um, and that was really the turning point. Chance is absolute freak, and although I've been critical of Ricky Stewart this year, and I think everyone should be, them almost missing out in finals is not good enough for that team who's 
you know, in a premiership window. I know they've lost their halfback and stuff this year, but um, the fact that they've missed Shans, I think, is not talked about about enough. If like Para missed Gutho or something, you know, there would be a lot of people saying, um, "Oh, well, fair enough. They're not they don't have their fullback, but Shans is that good for the Raiders, and I think he's definitely an underrated player and has a huge impact on that team. Uh, so yeah, that's huge for the Raiders, and they're right in the mix for the eight. Um, Fortunately, they've got the Roosters this week. I think I'll get to the preview in a sec, so I won't worry too much about the finals implication. But that led to the most dramatic game of the season, the uh, traditional rivalry, I guess you could say, the Roosters versus the Rabbitohs, East versus Souths. Souths won the game very convincingly. Uh, we thought they were going to win. The Roosters' injury toll was sort of at a, a peak this um, game. I don't think they've had more out um, all season. But unfortunately, the big headlines wasn't the actual football on the park. It was the Latrell incident. And I don't really want to go into it too much. It's now Wednesday. I'm recording this. It's almost a full week past it. I'm sure everyone's seen it. Everyone's got their own opinion. So I don't really feel the need to talk about it. He got six weeks, which I think is what he deserved. Um, it's disappointing for everyone. I think South really, um, well, he's really shot South in the foot. If I was like Adam Reynolds or Dan Gagai, a leaving player, I'd be really pissed off right now. Or Wayne Bennett if he leaves because this looked like their best chance to win a final, especially the ensuing results of the Storm and the Seagulls later on in the weekend. And, yeah, it was really disappointing. I felt really bad for the Roosters as well because they lose another player. Uh, but, yeah, it was just really shit out from Luttrell. Um, and the fact that, like... I don't know what disappointed me is, yes, he made a mistake. It was a really disgusting hit. He gets six weeks, all good. And I know he was emotional and he was, like, fired up. But um, after it, like, he was still losing the plot. I know the Roosters players were going after him. But, like, when he threw the ball down at um, Fletcher Baker, uh, people were saying he didn't hit him. But it's like, yeah, but even if you're, like, passionately throwing the ball down, you have time to see there's someone's head there. You can throw it a little bit further away. But... Oh, uh, yeah, that was just shit. Um, it was pretty crazy, the reports that came out about Warrior Hargraves and Radley on the sideline lipping him off. That would have been uh, crazy to see if that escalated further. Um, all I can say is Roosters Rabbitohs next year could be very, very interesting, and that's definitely one to mark down the calendar, um, especially if the Roosters have a full team by then because, um, that, yeah, that could be awesome. Hopefully... I wonder when they'll put it. They'll usually play each other twice, so it'll be pretty early on in this tournament, uh, in the season, you'd guess. But, yeah, that's going to be pretty fiery. I uh, wonder... Well, I'm pretty sure Manu's, like, made up with Luttrell or something. But, yeah, just... It's just poor from Luttrell. Like, I did lose a bit of respect from... In the Blues, um, after the Origin, he said, like, oh, I just... They were talking about the Dan Gagger. I think he's like, oh, I don't respect the opposition. Which, for me, that's not the right attitude. I'm a sportsman. I've played at a fairly high level, and I'm not the most competitive of people, so that's probably why I'm not a professional sportsman. But um, I think you can still respect your opposition, and I think Luttrell sort of needs to learn that balance between playing aggressively but still respecting them because at the end of the day, they're just like human beings like everyone else. And I know he didn't mean to smash his face in, but fortunately that's what he's done. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at there. Um, I thought Robbo's press conference was really powerful. I thought his comments about the bunker were all fair enough. They got fined $40,000, which, look, I don't know if I agree with it. As a podcast, the Hello Sport podcast I listened to mentioned Rio Tinto got fined $50,000 for blowing up indigenous caves and the Roosters get fined $40,000 for chatting shit about a bunker refereeing system, which is a bit of a gag, but... Um, yeah, well, unfortunately, that's just the rules, and they were willing to do it to take a stand, which I think is um, pretty honourable from the Roosters. Uh, and then that moves us into Saturday afternoon, which this actually turned out to be a good game of footy. I wasn't that excited for it, but the Dragons, Cowboys, um, the Dragons looked they were just looked like they were just going to grind over a win. They actually tipped the Cowboys, and they came steaming home. I think it was the 15 minutes after half time. Could be a mistake in there, but um, they scored about four tries in eight minutes or something. It was crazy. They just kept scoring long-range efforts. Halem, Lukey, uh, he was cutting shapes on that edge. Hammer was flexing his pace all over the all over the joint. And for a team that's coming second last, third last, um, like it was pretty positive showing. And fans could be buoyed by a performance like that. 
Uh, but yeah, really disappointing from the Dragons. They're giving opportunity to the to their youth, which is really important. They're an aging team, but yeah, they still look a long way off. Um, even though they're like a win outside the gate, they look a long way off. Uh, then that led us into Cronulla Brisbane. This was just a game where Cronulla just had to tick the box. Didn't matter how they played, they just had to get the job done. Brisbane are a tricky team at the moment to play. And the Sharkies got the job done. Um, Brisbane, valiant effort, but the Sharkies too good. Um, won it by eight points. Milf playing well again, which is good to see. Um, and Brisbane are actually a really exciting team. Um, so fair play to Kevy sort of changed that. They were a really, really boring team to watch last year. I know they were worse, but um, the brand of footy they're playing right now is not bad to watch at all. Uh, then that led us into the shock of the round, shock of the season, you'd have to say. Para in god-awful form, beating the Storm. Look, no one really saw this coming. People will say they were due and stuff like that, but still no one thought. Like, I thought it was going to be close. I predicted Para to cover the line, but never thought in my wildest dreams they would win. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit in my power rankings, but I do believe people are going a little bit hot on Para. Like, I don't want to tarnish their victory, but I don't think it's like putting them right up in the premiership picture yet for me. I think Melbourne played poorly, and Parramatta are a team at, are a team, if you play poorly against them, they'll punish you because they just grind up that middle. But, um, yeah, in finals, you'd expect everyone to be playing better footy than what Melbourne did. So I don't think um, Para are right in the premiership picture yet, but it was a positive sign and they fought really hard and won that middle battle, which they could do against a lot of teams in the top who may not have the greatest packs going around. Um, then that led us into Manly Canterbury on the Sunday Arvo. This was actually a good game. I think once again the scoreline was flattering in the favour of Manly, thirty six to eighteen. Um, the big news coming out of this was sort of like the hair pull penalty. I think it was overrated, but I think like I don't know. I don't really care if it's a penalty or not. Oh no, it's a dog act. But um, yeah, I listened to Graham Annesley on Monday, and what he said was kind of true about it. Like it, it's it is a penalty. It's in the rules, but. And then Ruben Garrick broke the record first player to ever score 20 tries, kick 100 goals, and he's also eight short of the regular season record for points scored. So that's one to look out for this round. That's a very impressive record. Sorry, back to that Melbourne game. I sort of jumped over that a bit quick. Um, Bellamy, oh, look, unfortunately, they've sort of left it a bit late, but they really haven't found the perfect mix since they've all been back the playmakers. I think Grant and Chi starting didn't work. I don't think they can do that moving forward. And, yeah, Hines off the bench. It's going to be an interesting one to see what he does next week. Not this week, because this week he's resting players. But, yeah, he's got some really, really big choices to make. I've heard calls saying Nico Hines should start. Pappenhausen should be out of the team completely. I've heard calls saying Hines should drop off the bench. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what Bellamy does, because right now it's... Um, not working for him, but he's the best coach, one of the best coaches of all time for a reason. And then finally, Penrith versus the Tigers. Um, finish off the round better than I thought. Um, I was expecting a 30-point loss. We lost by 14 points. As I'm a Tigers fan, if you didn't know. And it was a good effort. Fought hard, um, which I haven't been able to say on many occasions this um, year. Penrith too classy in the end. Didn't think they played that great. Um, Nathan Cleary had a lot of errors in him. Uh, but yeah, Penrith too big for us, which is something we've got to improve. We have some big middles now, but still on the edge, um, we really struggle to contain big back rowers like Kikau, and that's going to be something to like Tupinu. We've struggled with him in the past as well, so, so that's something we've got to address. And yeah, there was positive signs there for the Tigers, but like losing to by to Penrith by fourteen, you'll take that any day. Uh, but yeah, Penrith, um, one of the few teams to have a somewhat convincing win over the weekend, which was good for them. Um, that moves us into the power rankings. Rather than doing a predicted top eight now for the rest of the year, I'll be doing power rankings. Um, obviously, the top eight, there's not much discussion now, so I'll be doing it. Um, like who I think looks the best right now, basically who I think is the best chance of winning the premiership, that sort of thing. So number one, I've still got the Storm. Uh, I'm not that deterred by their loss on Saturday night. Um, I just think if you look at their 24-round season as a whole, they've still been the best team by quite some margin, and one or two bad performances in the last month is not going to put me off that. So I still trust Craig Bellamy to find the right mix between the playmakers, and I still trust that 
they'll be fit and firing come the latter stages of finals. I've got Panthers in number two. They probably look the best out of these teams on the weekend. Oh, I guess the Rabbitohs look good, but you know that was, no one was really watching the footy on that game after halftime. But yeah, Penrith, I think they've really only hit like full fitness now. Toto's back, Pangai's playing. Um, so they're really dangerous. I don't, I just can't picture them winning the premiership, but I think they've got a lot less pressure on them this year. I thought, I think last year, because they sort of came in as the underdog, everyone was like obsessed with them and everyone was sort of really riding them through. They had that win streak. Um, where now I think a lot of people are talking about Turbo. They're now going to talk about the Rabbitohs without the trail. Parramatta have sort of stolen some headlines this week. The Storm obviously get headlines. So I think the the pressure's shared a lot more across the top five. But uh, the Panthers are definitely, I think, a bit of a smoky right now. I know that's weird saying to a team coming in second and with a chance at the minor premiership this weekend, but I'll say it. Uh, number three, I've got Manly. Uh, Manly are really good, and they're a dangerous team. They could put 50 on about anyone, but um, as we saw on Saturday night, um, it's like good to be a really uh, expansive team, but ultimately it's important to have good middles, and I'm not sure Manly have the middles, what it, like their middles have what it takes, if you know what I mean. Um, when Storm are fully fit and you have the likes of Nelson, Kamakamitha, Welch, Cheese, I think there might be a little bit too much for Manly. But when you've got Turbo, when you've got Cherry Evans, when you've got Schuster, um, anything's possible. So, yeah, Manly are definitely the wild card team. Now, before I've got the Rabbitohs, um, I don't think the Latrell injury actually changed them in this order for me, but it's definitely lowered their um, chances a lot. Um, I didn't think they were much chance with him. I think they're next to no chance without him, to be honest. Um, Blake Taffy's going to be playing there, which I'm happy they're doing instead of like Cody Walker at fullback or something. I think it's just good to give it to the youth who's an actual fullback or has played a lot of fullback in the past. So he's going to be exciting to watch. And yeah, that's going to be something to watch this week, how Taffy goes. At uh, number five, I've got the Roosters. I was going to put them below para, but I think they're getting a lot of players back this weekend. And by finals, they might be a different team to what they were on the weekend. And they've still got the big game experience. They've got Tedesco. So I don't think you can sleep on the Roosters. Uh, Parramatta fans probably going to be annoyed at this, but I've got them in at sixth. Um, I know they beat Melbourne on the weekend, but... Like the last eight weeks have been average and one good performance isn't going to change the way I see them really. I just don't think they have the points in them to win a lot of these games. Their goal line defense is incredible um, and that's going to be something really challenging for these teams that come, uh, come against them in finals. But yeah, para for me, number six. Uh, number seven, Knights. I've only got, they would probably be number 10 for me. I, I'm only doing the teams who can make finals, but they are locked in finals. So they're number seven for me. Uh, I've got the Sharkies in at number eight. The bottom three teams is basically just the order likelihood, I think, of making the finals. So the Sharkies are in eight. I think they'll lose this week to the Storm, but their goal different. I think the Titans have to beat, um, like, there's about a 30-point difference the Titans have to make up in points differential. So uh, I'll give the advantage to the Sharks. Then I've got the Titans in at ninth because they're playing the Warriors. Then I've got the Raiders in at last. Their points difference is pretty low, and they've got to beat the Roosters, which will be a tough challenge this week. All right, time for my uh, – oh, just before I get into my um, 17 under – 1-7 seven under 9-7. I'll call it that now. It's just not a catchy um, catchy title anyway. But uh, if you – the reason I've got a hectic mullet going on is um, I am a part of a team doing the – um, mullets for mental health with the black dog institute so i'll be leaving a um donation link in my social media and in the description of this uh video and episode so feel free to if you can go donate to that it's a good cause especially in these tough times of lockdown there's a lot of people struggling so that'd be greatly appreciated all right time for the 17 under 97 I've put a minimum of 12 games in uh, the AFL do a minimum of 12. They have a less, less, less games in the season, but with like origin and stuff, I thought I'll just do 12 as well. All right. Number one, I've got Latrell Mitchell. The fullback spot was probably the hardest. Um, there was Will Kennedy, Kalen Ponga, Reese Walsh, some of the other best selections, but 
I've stuck with the trail. Um, I'm doing it mainly based on this season. Um, it's hard to exclude some bias based on history, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to just do this season. And I think luttrell has been the best. Ponga, definitely not been his best this year. Reese Walsh has been really good, but I don't think he's been at the level of Luttrell, who's just been a very, very consistent player this season when he's been on the park. Killed it for New South Wales, obviously, in a different position, but uh, for me, it's Luttrell. Uh, the wingers, I have Jason Saab and Brian Toto, the perfect wing combination for me. You've got a meter eater and Toto, a uh, try scoring machine in Saab. So uh, for me, that was a no brainer. Garrick and Tuolangi were probably the other two I considered. Centers, I've got Morgan Harper and Remus Smith, two of the best centers in the competition right now. Herbie Farnworth and Brad Park were stiff to miss out, but for me, Morgan Harper's just been incredible since um, he's been found by the Seagulls pretty much. And Remus, I uh, know he's playing in a favourable position at the Storm, but he's scoring a lot of tries, very good defensively as well. Uh, so, yeah, for me, he's a must-have. Then in the 6 and 7, I could have gone controversial, but I didn't think there was much conversation. Luai and Cleary, it's got to be. The New South Wales halves, in my opinion, actually, no, he's probably still going to go Munster in the Australian team, but pretty close to the Australian 6 and 7. Uh, so yeah, you got to go them. I was tempted to go Dewey over Luai. I think Dewey's been very underrated this year. Incredible player, but I, I think Jerome's first half of the season sort of been forgotten. It was very, very good. In the front row, I've got Payne Haas and Taniel Paseca. The front row is definitely a weakness in this team. Uh, I guess it's because players sort of take a bit longer to um, progress into like real first graders in the front row. Um, so there wasn't weren't too many actually um, eligible. So Payne Haas and Paseca for me. Reid Marnie uh, at the hooking position. Uh, the big battle there was with Blake Braley. Uh, I think Blake Blake Braley, sorry, is really good. But I think Reid Marnie almost played himself into a Queensland jersey if it wasn't for injury. So he had a really good season. Uh, back row, this was a tough one. A lot of good options here. But I went with David Fafida and Josh Schuster. Fafida's been hit and miss at times, but... The amount of tries he's scored, the amount of games he's arguably won off his own back, um, you've got to pick him. And shoes has just been incredible for me. Um, Ola Kowatu and Tupanua, very, very unlucky to miss out. And Blake Laurie was also stiff to miss out ahead of Paseca. In the lock position, I've gone Cameron Murray. This wasn't much of a choice for me. I think Murray's the obvious option. In 14, I've actually... Picked a hooker, but I've gone with the specialist bench hooker because I believe he is one of the best hookers in the game. But because he is in a not a myth team, but a team that doesn't have a big media market, and he comes off the bench, I think he gets overlooked. And that's Tommy Starling. I think um, when he comes off the bench for Canberra, they look like a top four team. When he's off, they look like a bottom four team. So yeah, I think Tom Starling's incredible. Uh, Isaiah Papali'i is another one I've got on there. Pretty unlucky not to get picked, to be honest, but um, his flexibility in the front row, lock, second row, I think he's a must-have there for me. Incredible season by the year. And then I've got Liam Martin as well, similar to Papali'i, very flexible, can play back row, can play front row. Uh, very, very good player. Arguably got an even better from last year where he was awesome for Penrith, and he's played a lot of bench this year with Kikau and Capewell being in the rotation, but um, wherever he plays, he's awesome. And then in number 17, I've actually gone a utility. I've gone Matt Burton, controversial, but his ability to play centre, um, 5'8", halfback, could probably play wing, could probably, probably play fullback. Um, I think he adds a very good flexibility to this team. Um, stiff on like Reese Walsh and Ponga, but yeah, I think Burton um, just adds a different dimension to the team. So that's my 17 players born in 1997 or younger. Let me know yours in the comments or if any of my selections were average. Um, it was a bit of a rush, but um, I enjoyed making it. We'll be looking to do more stuff like that in the future. All right, the round 25 review, the final regular season uh, preview, sorry, the final regular season preview of the season. First game, we've got the Raiders up against the Roosters out in Mackay. Changes are Nickel Klockstat will Kluke Star, sorry, will start his first game of the season, actually. That's an absolute guess. He could have started round one. He might have actually. Um Rapana to the wing. 
Uh, Warrior Hargraves, Kieran, Josh Morris, and Matt Ikevalu all scheduled to return. Obviously, Joey Manu out. The Roosters are only just favourites in this. The line's two and a half, and I'll be honest, I'll be snapping that up. I'm taking Roosters head-to-head. Roosters at the line. I think we saw it against the Dragons. The Roosters, um, they're still a very good team and can put on points against anyone. So even though the Raiders have a lot to play for with a spot in the eight on the offing, offering, um, I've, that's not English, but I'll take the Roosters at the line and the Roosters at head-to-head. That moves us into Friday 6 o'clock, Melbourne with like their only Friday 6 o'clock game, I swear. Um, up against the Sharkies, Moylan swaps with Metcalf on the bench. So Metcalf will now come off the bench. Nelson is off the Solomona, Dale Finucane and George Jennings all scheduled to return from injury for the Storm. Harry Grant's bench and for the Cheese and Melbourne have rested a lot of players. I'm not going to read out the people who've been rested all for any team. Uh, the line's nine and a half. I'm actually going to take it, and I'm going to take them head-to-head. I think it's a generous line. and I know the Sharks have been in good form and similar to the Raiders. They have a lot to play for, but I think Melbourne make a bit of a statement and bounce back even without some of their best players. Um, it could be a risky play, but it's Craig Bellamy. That's my main reasoning. Parramatta versus Penrith. The line's Panthers t- minus 28 and a half. Not really any changes for the Panthers. Para arresting a lot of players. Um, I'm going to have to take Para at the line, but it'll be taking the Panthers head to head. Can't go off the top of the skull. Who Parramatta arresting? I know Gutho's out. Um, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who wins that one and by how much. But yeah, I reckon Penrith will win. Not sure by how much. Twenty eight and a half's a lot, so I'll take Para at the line. Brisbane versus Newey. Uh, that's the early Saturday game. Big game for Newcastle because if they want to do anything in finals, they've got to put on a bit of a show against Brisbane, and I think it's going to be hard for them. They're resting a few players. The line's three and a half. I'm actually going to take Brisbane here. I took them against the Warriors two weeks ago, and I've picked them to win a few upset games this, this year, and they've done me well. So I'm going to hop on them again. So I'm taking Brisbane at the line and Brisbane head-to-head. Um, North Queensland, Manly. This could be an exciting game, actually, because uh, North Queensland play exciting footy. Uh, this is in Townsville. Paseca and Kepi are back for Manly, which is big. Uh, the line's 22.5 in Manly's favour. I think I'm going to take North Queensland at the line, Manly at the head-to-head. Uh, it's a big line. Manly can put on points, but, um, yeah, I think the Cowboys will score too many points to lose by that much, if you get me. Um, South versus St. George, Saturday night at the sunny coast. Um, South's arresting a lot of players. Blake Taffy's been named at fullback. Zach Lomax is out for the drags. Rabdo's line's minus two and a half. They've got a lot of myths playing. Dragons could win this, you know. The Dragons could win this. Oh, this is a tough one, actually. Um, part of me wants to go South with the same logic at the Melbourne thing, but... Souths. Look, I actually don't know off the top of my head who's being rested. I know Walker and Reynolds are both being rested. Um, I'm not sure if Cook's being rested. That would be another key one for me. Or Murray. Murray is being rested because he's in my fantasy team and he's not playing. So I'm down to like 15 players in my fantasy team. So I'm actually going to take the Dragons at the line and head to head. Because why the fuck not? Uh, Saturday, Sunday, last day of the regular season. Gold Coast versus the Warriors. Kevin Proctor's back for the Titans. Harris Davida's back for the Warriors. Bunty of Foa is out for the Warriors. The line's 11.5 in the favour of the Titans. I can forecast this happening. Cronulla or Canberra win. Gold Coast are out of it. They come on and put an absolute show on. Pump the Warriors in their final game, which would be a freaking dog act, but I can see it happening. I'll probably be going for the Warriors. Big fan of the Warriors. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, I think the Titans get up and I think they win well, maybe by 2022. And I would love to see it, though, if Canberra and Cronulla lose. um, It'll be hectic, especially if Cronulla don't lose by much and Gold Coast have to win by, like, 20 or 25. And they're just throwing the nut around. Oh, that'd be sick to watch. Um, Great way to end it. 
Um, and then finally, we end with the one of the worst clashes of the season. <laughs> the Tigers up against the Bulldogs at Redcliffe. Um, this is following a Redcliffe game, I believe. Uh, no changes really for either team or no changes of note. Tigers are the favourite. at The line's negative 7.5, minus 7.5. I think the Tigers win head-to-head, but I'm not sure if they cover that line. I'm scared of the Bulldogs because I think the Bulldogs would have highlighted games like this. Um, it's been a tough season for them. Games against the Broncos, games against the Warriors, games against the Tigers. They're games you highlight when you're a bottom team. I've been in a um, Aussie Rules footy team who didn't win a game all season, and I know we highlighted three or four games against two or three of the weaker clubs, and we like trained the house down those weeks. So um, I am scared of the Bulldogs being with that mentality, and they have a lot of players playing their last game in the cl- for the club or in the league. So for that reason, I'm probably going to take the doggies at the line. I'm going to say it's a close one. I'm scared of a loss, but at the same time, when the pressure's off, the Tigers generally play a lot better. So um, I'm going to go Tigers head-to-head. Not sure about the line, though. I'll go doggies line, Tigers head-to-head, but hopefully we pump them by 15, which could also very much happen. It could see Brooksy cut loose, which is what he usually does when the game season's over. But that's been another episode of the On The Ball Potty. A short one, but we got a lot covered. Pretty proud of myself. Um, but, yeah, once again, if you have any spare change or um, – well, not even that. If you just want to donate to the Mullets for Mental Health um, campaign that I'm a part of, uh, yeah, the donation link will be in the bio or the description or it's also in my social media. So, uh, yeah, if you could check that out, that would be huge um, as obviously in lockdown times we've got to look out for each other's mental health and the best way to do that is um, by propping up mental health institutions so they can offer professional support to others. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it for this week's episode. Pumped for finals. Absolutely pumped for finals. People saying this round's going to be rubbish because people are getting rested and that's against the integrity or whatever they say that it's, the game's lost integrity. But the way I see it is if you get the storm this week, it's just luck of the draw. And unfortunately for the Raiders and uh, the Titans, um, the Sharkies have, but that's no different. Like the Tigers got Penrith in origin. We beat them. We wouldn't have beat them if they were full strength. So, I don't really get that argument. I know like it would be really frustrating as a Raiders fan or something if they lose to the Roosters and they can Sharkies pump the storm. But for me, um, the teams in the top, they deserve the rest. They That's what they've done. They've worked so hard all year. They deserve a rest because they've finished so well. Um, one thing that could change it and not really affect the competition too much is if they had a wild card weekend, um, for example, seventh plays 10th 8th plays 9th is like in a plane tournament but uh yeah i don't know if that would work too well but that's like an idea i would cop but i would not cop a finals by as someone who somewhat follows afl if there's anyone out there who doesn't the finals by has been the worst invention ever it's like the biggest momentum killer um you know the competition's building steam and you just take a week off and let um fans just forget about what's happened and go follow other sports to do other activities not the thing to do so yeah if anyone's campaigning for that i highly advise not to do that because it's an awful idea but uh yeah that's it for another episode everyone stay safe everyone stay well comment something if you feel like it get around it if you feel like it and we'll catch you next week cheers it's a Cheers, here's Siddle.